Hello and welcome to our talk, top down and bottom up, exploiting vulnerabilities in the OT cloud era. Um, before we begin, let's uh, talk a little bit about who we are. So, um, my name is Sharon Brzezinov, I'm a vulnerability, team res vulnerability research team lead at Clarity. Uh, and with me is Uri Katz, uh, our senior security researcher at Clarity. And we're part of a team that uh, researching and trying to find vulnerabilities in OT equipment. So uh, you can see in our background and in, in the picture in front of you, our cool lab. This is our playground uh, where we're trying to find and exploit vulnerabilities. Uh, we're working with different vendors to find vulnerabilities, disclose the vulnerabilities to the vendors, and basically what we are working with them uh, to fix any security issues that we're finding and eventually we're uh, publishing our research on uh, the vulnerabilities that we're finding. So you can see uh, the table in front of you of some of the vulnerabilities that we found in many of the ICS vendors. We're also participating in different competitions. Uh, we've participated in Pwn2Own in 2020. Uh, we've participated in DEF CON uh, ICS uh, CTF. Uh, where we won the first place and we're doing and uh, conducting uh, lots of uh, research and competitions in those areas. So with that, we would like to discuss uh, today a little bit about uh, SCADA infrastructure in the cloud. So we would like to dis uh, describe what it means of ICS security uh, in the cloud, what it means to have infrastructure uh, in the cloud and how can devices, ICS devices and OT equipment can communicate with uh, cloud infrastructure outside the perimeter and outside the OT network. So let's start uh, with uh, what is a typical SCADA infrastructure. So we have the Purdue model, as you're all aware of. Uh, we have a, a couple of layers that in each layer we have different devices with different capabilities and roles. In the lowest level, in level zero, we have a field devices. Field devices are actuators and sensors. They are communicating, uh, they're sensing and uh, doing uh, actual and physical work in our world. Uh, above that, we have uh, PLCs, so we have the brains, PLCs, and RTUs. And above that, we have HMIs and engineering stations that are controlling and interacting with the PLCs. So for example, if I would like to download code to uh, the PLC, I would use engineering station to program uh, the, the logic and transfer it to the PLC. Uh, in which the PLC will digest the logic, will execute the logic and control the field devices, the sensors and the actuators. So if we're taking this image or the Purdue model to be very concise, we can see here just the engineering station and the HMI communicating and interacting with PLCs and the PLCs are connected to valves in this example and the PLCs are actually doing something physical, uh, sorry, the valves are doing something physical in our world where the PLCs are controlling those valves and the humans, the engineers, the operators are controlling the PLCs through the engineering station and the HMI. The engineering station is meant uh, for programming and configuration uh, mostly, while the HMI is mostly for data acquisition and for the engineers to understand what's going on within the process. So if we're, if we're taking this further, today there is a huge trend to move everything to the cloud. Uh, it started with IT infrastructure, servers are no longer physical boxes, they're kind of a server somewhere in the cloud, and it's starting to uh, get into the ICS and OT networks too, and we're seeing more and more devices starting to be controlled and managed by cloud-based infrastructure. And we're also seeing this through cloud-based cloud SCADA infrastructure as well. So why do people want to move to the cloud? There are a couple of reasons. First of all, uh, telemetry. So uh, all the devices are transmitting telemetry always to the cloud. So it's very easy 
to control and understand what's going on in all of the devices. There are nice dashboards and trends and graphs, so it's easier to understand what's going on in terms of telemetry and logs. Uh, the management of logic uh, can be done uh, through the cloud. So usually there is a console management that you can go into and manage all of the de devices that are being uh, controlled by the, the cloud infrastructure, which means we can download logic through the cloud to all of the devices at once. So it's very easy setup. We can have lots of diagnostics and troubleshooting because everything is connected to the cloud. You don't need to be inside the, net the network. You can be uh, somewhere in the internet, just go online to the website, the console management th that is exposed to the internet and diagnose and do some troubleshooting, get all the logs and manage the, uh, the firmwares, manage the logic of the devices and control the devices remotely without the need to be physically inside the network. And obvious, obviously, it's a centralized view of processes and redundancy. So when we're talking about cloud-based infrastructure, we're, we're usually <clears throat> talking about lots of instances in different regions. So we have lots of redundancy, and we can control and manage all of the devices that are directly connected to the cloud. So if we're taking this a bit further, and we're reevaluating the new Purdue model. So basically, it's all broken. We don't have these layers anymore because all the PLCs, and when we're talking about ICS infrastructure that is connected to the cloud, all the PLCs, all the HMIs, all the, the engineering stations are basically controlled and managed through the cloud. So there is no longer a need for the Purdue model because everything is connected and managed through the cloud. All the PLCs are connected to the cloud from one side and the cloud or the management console, which is basically a website in the cloud uh, of which engineers, operators, administrators can log in to the internet, uh, in, to the web page uh, in the internet somewhere uh, in the cloud, we're saying, and control and manage these devices. So if we're reevaluating the the little screenshot that we've seen before, so the engineering, the HMI, and the PLC, now we don't need to be in the same network because the PLCs are connected directly outside to the perimeter, connected directly to the cloud, which is a server somewhere, somewhere uh, in one of the cloud providers such as AWS, Azure, or Google Computer. Compute. Uh, GCP. So we're having the functionality of the HMI and the engineering provided through the console management in the cloud where engineers can just go online to one of the websites and manage the devices that are controlled by the uh, management console and the SCADA infrastructure through the cloud. So everything is much easier for engineers and asset owners because now they can control all the equipment through the cloud, which means through the internet, and they don't have to be physically present inside the network. So what kind of roles do we have with uh, this kind of new infrastructures? So we have the same old roles, such as programmers that are writing the logic. We have management, which are uh, kind of uh, the, um, people are managing the, the OT managers that, that, that are managing the operations and managing the process. So they're doing kind of a view reports uh, with kind of HMI functionality or device commissioning when they're buying new devices. And we're also having the administration uh, level, which is responsible for creating new accounts and they're responsible for security. So all of these different roles are communicating uh, to the cloud-based management console. So they're communicating with the management console somewhere in the cloud, basically, and usually it's a website where they can go online, log in, and then it, depending the functionality, they can, program, they can upload a program or logic to be transferred to the end device, to the edge device, or they can view reports. It's kind of a HMI screen, you would say, or do some kind of administration processes such as creating new accounts 
for uh, engineers or OT managers or uh, fix uh, permissions and policy for other users. So all of these roles or different personas in, uh, in the, this infrastructure are communicating with one entity, which is the cloud-based management console, and everything from there is flowing to the PLCs or to the end devices, which can be other devices than PLCs, uh, and control and manage these end devices through the management console. So this is the new era where everything is connected directly to the internet and there is no, no longer a need for uh, VPN accesses or other kind of uh, phys being physically present inside the OT network. This is the modern era. Now, let's, we want to give you an example because all we said up until now is kind of abstract. There are PLCs and devices connected to a cloud-based management console, and we have uh, engineers communicating with this console to control the end devices. But let's give a, a real example, uh, and we have Codices. So Codices is a European company. Uh, it's, a, it's a great vendor we're working closely with. Uh, and they're developing uh, their development system which enables programming and configurations of PLCs. So you can, you can use their platform to create logic and download this logic to the PLCs. The PLCs are usually running the codices runtime which analyzes and dissect the, the logic uh, that, you, that the engineers are writing using the codices development system. And the PLC using the codices runtime can execute the logic to control field devices uh, such as actuators and sensors. There is a variety of uh, PLCs and vendors that are using codices as part of their uh, runtime engine. So we have Wago, uh, we have ABB AC500, we have PLC Next, and, uh, and many more. And codices can even run on Raspberry Pi uh, and, and other platforms as well. So here is an example of codices IDE. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's kind of a basic ID where you, you have the target, the PLC target, and you have uh, the IDE interface where you can write the logic. It can be a ladder diagram where it can be uh, structured text or other pr uh, ICS related programming languages. And you can compile the logic and transfer it to the codices runtime, which it sits on one of the supported PLCs and platforms. So this is a codices uh, IDE and Codices uh, development system. Now, Codices took this one step further and created their own automation server. So instead of managing PLCs back-to-back, uh, -back, kind of uh, uh, with, uh, with the necess necessity to be in the same network, they've created the Codices automation server, which allows Codices supported devices to be connected to a centralized uh, cloud-based management console where asset owners can manage PLCs remotely. So basically they can, just like we uh, discussed previously, they can manage and control all of the supported PLCs remotely through the cloud for every instance, every, every device that is uh, linked and associated with the cloud. And codices are providing lots of uh, features above this uh, cloud platform. So basically they're offering HMI capabilities with their, with their uh, web WebVisio platform. So basically you can create screens uh, that, uh, that you can see through the, the a kind of a nice GUI of what's going on in the process because the PLC is sending telemetry and data all the time to the cloud. So you can visualize all the process use, using their web visual features. And you can also uh, use their kind of engineering working station capabilities to create logic using, using their IDE, transfer it to the cloud-based platform, which is the automation server, and download the logic and configuration to all the connected PLCs. Again, everything through the internet. So, Basically, when you're uh, 
setting up your account in Codice's automation server, you will receive your own AWS based instance. Uh, you can see here an example of such an instance. And this is uh, a personal instance for each account that you can just go online to this instance and control all the associated linked devices. So let's see an example real quick. Here is an example to devices that are being controlled through this platform. So basically what you're seeing here is a website somewhere in the internet using one of the instances that Codis is uh, created for the account. And you have all your linked devices uh, to control. So you can go in into one of the devices and do a download logic. You can change configuration. You can change settings on these devices and everything will be transferred and downloaded to the PLC because the PLC is directly connected to the cloud platform. Now, Codices took this even one step further and created the Codices store. So basically it's like the Apple store or the Google Play store where you can download applications, but just for your code and your uh, process. So basically you can download examples of uh, already created applications, or you can download libraries, or you can download uh, clients that will be run on the PLC. And you can use the store uh, to accelerate the development cycle and use code that other people wrote without inv inventing the wheel. So if someone else wrote the code to uh, process some kind of a mathematical uh, algorithm so you can just download the the library that he created and maybe pay for this if they're selling this uh, with uh, by money or not or you can download for free if uh, the developers are offering this uh, for free but the basic idea is the same you can just uh, as a developer you can offer your own code or libraries or programs that others can download and use in their projects uh, so this is an example of AWS IoT Core client that uh, is being offered for free, as you can see here. Uh, and other developers and asset owners can download and use this library for free to integrate their PLC with AWS IoT platform. And the final feature that uh, we want to discuss uh, regarding Codices is the web visio. So it's a visualization uh, kind of a HMI in the internet browser via HTML5. So you can create all these kind of different screens uh, to interact with. So basically the PLCs that are linked to the cloud are sending telemetry and data all the time about trends, about tags, about um, any anything that was configured in the logic. and you can create screens that will take all of the aggregated data to present uh, in a very nicely uh, presented view and GUI, just like a normal HMI, just in the cloud, just in uh, a screen uh, that is based on HTML5. And it's very easy to control and create nice screens that anyone can access with the proper uh, uh, ACLs. So. We have engineering working station and we have HMI and we even have the Codices store to create download applications. And we have every, all the, these services in one platform that is connected through the cloud, through the internet, and all the connected PLCs can be managed, controlled, and present information, everything directly through the internet. So this is a great example uh, to what we discussed earlier. Now, we would like to discuss uh, Wago. So Wago is a German company, European company. They have uh, uh, two main product, PLC products, uh, which are, are the 750 and 750 XDR and the PFC series, PFC 100 and PFC 200. Uh, we mainly focused on PFC uh, 100 and 200. And this, uh, is a, and this is an example for a PLC uh, that is Linux based and it, it is running the Codices runtime. So it has a great integration with Codices and all the great features that I mentioned earlier can be used with Wago. So basically Wago runs the Codices runtime and 
The Codices runtime can communicate with other Codices related platforms and systems. So this means that we can control our Wago PFC 100 200 using Codices automation server and basically manage all of our Wago PLCs through the cloud. So the Wago PFC 100 200 is a uh, is a basic uh, PLC. It runs. It has lots of functionality that uh, most of uh, PLCs uh, contain these days. Support a full standard field bus protocols and Ethernet uh, standards such as Profibus, Modbus, Profinet, etc. And it has uh, lots of interfaces such as RS485 uh, and RS232. And as I've mentioned, it is running the Codices runtime which means it has great integration with all of the Codices platforms and even the programming uh, can be done through uh, Codices and we will show you a couple of examples very soon. So let's take a look at how the attack surface is changed after moving to the cloud. And to do that we first need to understand what attackers are trying to achieve. And it's pretty easy in the ICS world. Attackers are either trying to gain money or to cause damage. And attackers reaching an OT network have a few options. They can start by shutting down equipment, randomly stopping PLCs. And this is sometimes effective and really noisy. More complex attackers will try to modify parameters and that requires a bit more knowledge about the operation itself and knowing what to change. Another thing we can we see is uh, attackers wiping data or encrypting data and this is mostly for money. We see that in the latest ransomware attacks. So how a traditional ICS attack looks like is uh, first attackers need to bypass many protections and firewall to even reach the OT network and even if they reach uh, a computer inside the network, they have some challenges. Uh, most of the equipment is uh, backed up or has redundant equipment uh, to take its place. So if an attacker stops one PLC, uh, the redundant, redundant one uh, will uh, start working. And there are also many safety checks along the way. So attackers really need to have a good uh, coverage of, over the OT network in, a, in order to really cause damage. In cloud attacks, the thing that separates attackers from the OT network is usually just username and password. And when attackers gain access to a cloud, they have a full view of the operation and can instantly modify parameters and uh, change uh, values in PLCs. In our research, we developed two main methodologies for cloud attacks, the top-down and the bottom-up. The top-down starts with attacking an engineering station, then going up to the cloud and attacking all of the managed uh, PLCs. The bottom-up attack starts with a PLC, then we climb our way up the cloud to take uh, control over the entire operation. So let's start with the bottom-up attack. We use the Wago device to demonstrate uh, this attack. And Wago devices have a, a, a configuration port open on port 6626. And this is used for the initial configuration like setting a host name or subnet for the device. This port remains open after the initial configuration which gives us a big attack surface. So we found two vulnerabilities in the IO check D process. Uh, a shared memory overflow and a stack buffer overflow. Let's start with the shared memory overflow. The IOCHFD has a write register command which writes to a certain uh, memory location and this is limited by the count parameter. We found out that, that the count parameter is checked for every table that you can write for except for table 99 which is also uh, sh uh, stored in the shared memory region. So we were actually able to use the write register command to write more than the size of table 99 and overflow it uh, into another memory region. Uh, the memory 
region is in the shared memory, so by itself, this is not that useful. The second uh, vulnerability we found is in the response for the read variable command. Uh, the read variable command assumes that the maximum size is 1400 bytes, and this is the maximum count. Uh, uh, this is the maximum count size. But if we are able to write more than 1400 uh, bytes, we are able to read more than that. So the read register command for table 99 can return more than 1400 bytes and copy that to the stack buffer of the response. And in that way, we can write our payload using the write register command. And while reading it with the read register command, overflow the buffer with our payload. So this is the, the output of a script that runs the full remote code execution. So after uh, we got our remote code execution, we started looking for ways uh, to get up to the cloud. And we discovered the CodeSys uh, WebVisu option. This option lets you write uh, JavaScript and HTML pages on the PLC and present them remotely. Uh, this option is also open uh, to th from the cloud, which means that any operator viewing it will have a cloud cookie. So if you have control over the PLC itself, and we can change the JavaScript, for example, we can change it to get the cookie from the person viewing it and create a user for the cloud where we control the username and the password. So this gives us a new user in our control in the cloud. So let's chain it all together. We start with a read and write register buffer overflow uh, that gains us uh, remote code execution on the Wago PLC. Then we change the JavaScript to create a new user in the cloud. And we use that cloud to take over the entire operation. So starting from PLC and going up to the cloud and using that to manage and control the entire operation. The second method we developed is the top-down attack. The top-down approach starts with targeting an engineering station, and we decided to look at the code sys packages. Packages are just normal zip files which contains uh, dependencies and sometimes even DLLs. Uh, we discovered that those packages are not signed and we can change them uh, to contain our malicious code. So we actually made a package that when an engineer installs it, would get his cloud credentials from the engineering station and send it back to us. So once we have access to the cloud, we can change running modes of the PLCs, stop them, or even uh, change process values. But the holy grail of attacks is to actually run native code on the PLCs. Uh, this is not yet published, so we can't speak about details here, but we actually managed to run native code on the Wago PLCs from the cloud. So once we have the cloud credentials, we were able to execute code on all of the PLCs in the operation. So a quick recap on the top-down attack. We create a malicious package, upload it to the code sys store. Operators install this package and the cloud credentials of the operators are sent back to us. Then we can do whatever we want with the, uh, with the operation. Uh, we can stop PLCs, we can run code, we can do anything we want with the operation. So starting from an engineer, moving to the cloud, and then to all of the devices in the operation. That's it for today. Thank you everyone who attended our talk in DEFCON 29 at CS Village. We hope you, you, we hope you enjoyed our uh, talk about attacking cloud-based 
infrastructure in ICS. And uh, if you have any questions, now it's the time. Thank you very much.